Time Out. Welcome back to Time Out, where we're going to start with a trip over to Beamer for Howell's Dodge at Guardian Angel Central Catholic. The Blue Jays' tough running back Jerry Minnick got hurt in this one after a really solid first half, but the Blue Jays rallied for a 40-34 win. They advanced to the state semifinals. They'll play against Exeter Milligan Friend on Tuesday. The game to watch on Tuesday might be right here in Norfolk with Creighton traveling to Lutheran High Northeast. The Eagles with a big 66 26 win on the road last week against Osceola High Plains. Here's Eagles coach Darren Suckstor. Uh, well, when you believe you can play with anybody, um, and it comes with the preparation. These guys deserve the win, not because you know they're good kids or they're good football. They prepared extremely well uh, for this game, and I thought it showed tonight. Speaking of that big win, Ben Gebhardt returned two kickoff returns for touchdowns. He also had three interceptions defensively and a pass reception on offense. Excelling in all three phases of the game, I'd say so. But also excelling in all three phases on the offensive end was Jackson Kent with one rushing touchdown, three passing touchdowns, and he caught a 63-yard touchdown pass on a halfback pass. Here's Jackson Kent after that. Crane's a good team, but uh, we knew coming in this that that was the team to beat, and that is going to be the team to beat. And, um, you know, I think we're on a good roll right now. So we just keep preparing well. Um, just like how we have been, I think we got a good shot of winning that game. I mentioned Lutheran High Northeast. Creighton also took care of business in a big way, beating up Wisner Pilgers 66-12 to to advance to that state quarterfinal. Speaking of Class D1 also, North Central with a big upset over undefeated and third-seeded Nebraska Christian 36-28. to The Knights will host Dundee County Stratton on Tuesday in over in Bassett. Moving our attention over to Class D2, Humphrey St. Francis will play at Fall City Sacred Heart in the state quarterfinals. Flyers outraced Hardington Newcastle 54-8, and the Irish beat up Randolph 60-22. Also in Class D2, Bloomfield advanced to another quarterfinal matchup after they beat Osmond 30-20. to They'll travel to Johnson. They'll play Johnson Brock. All the Eagles did was beat Allen 76-0. to Turning our attention over to 11-man action on Friday night, Norfolk Catholic took care of business in a big way, 56-12 over St. Paul in a rematch from earlier this season. Dylan Couts is now up to 40 touchdowns rushing this season. The Class C2 record for an entire season, by the way, is 42. That record might be in reach. Knights travel to face a 10-1 Sutton team who defeated Battle Creek in the first round of the playoffs. Also in Class C2, Oakland Craig got a three touchdown lead on its way to a 35-21 win over Wilbur Claytonia. There are two undefeated teams left in Class C2 and they will play each other in the semifinals. Oakland Craig will travel to Centennial, which defeated Bancroft Rosalie Lions Decatur 33-28. But the best game in the area for 11-man teams resulted in upsets, and it didn't go so well for the area team. Wahoo Newman pulled the upset 23-21 over Pierce. The Blue Jays led 14-0 in the first quarter. Their next four drives, however, went like this. Punt, interception, punt, fumble before their next touchdown drive. The only problem was Newman ran out pretty much the rest of the clock after that, driving, getting a 29-yard field goal with four seconds left in the game. Here's head coach Mark Brainer. And I wouldn't trade these guys for the world. Um, a Pierce Young man is, in, in my opinion, one of the best individuals you can be around, not just as football players, but also as young men. They commit year-round um, through their other sports as well as to football. Put a lot of time and effort in the weight room. Um, and then during the season, they put a lot of time and effort into it. So, you know, I, I wouldn't train them for the world. Um, we work as hard, as hard as we can as coaches to put them in the best possible situation to be successful, and then our guys run with it. So we're very proud of them. You know, this is going to sting for quite a while. But at the same time, we're going to look back at it, look back at it and... Uh, you know, be proud of what we were able to accomplish this year as a group. As I mentioned previously, there are no new area football ratings until the end of the season, but you'll want to grab Monday's paper to check out my predictions of area playoff games. They're moved up early because of the Tuesday quarterfinal games in eight-man action. Until next time, I'm Nick Benish, and thanks for taking a timeout with us.